Hi there, welcome to this in-depth video on prednisone. In this video we cover everything you need to know. How and when to use prednisone, what would be the correct dose and also what are possible side effects or interactions with other medications. We will cover that and many more in this video, so stay tuned. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul. I'm making medical videos every week, so if you're interested, feel free to subscribe for more upcoming content. Also, if you're looking for a shorter, more to the point video in easy to understand language, I also made such a video. You can find a link to that video in the description. So before we start, a little disclaimer. This video is meant purely informational. This is not medical advice, and if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. So the generic name of this medication is prednisone. And it's known under several brand names like Deltazin, Liquid Pred, Orizin, and Edison. And it's available in tablets and capsules. Prednisone has many, many use cases, and the most common of them are listed here. I will not read all of them out loud, so feel free to pause the video at any time to check them out in more detail. So, when using prednisone for rheumatic diseases, it's most commonly used as maintenance treatment for rheumatic arthritis. In treating lung diseases, it is used in exacerbations of asthma or COPD and also in sarcoidosis or in severe allergic reactions. In gastrointestinal disorders, it's most commonly used in maintenance treatment of ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease and in hematological disorders, it can be used to treat autoimmune hematolytic anemia. When looking to endocrinological disorders, it can be used to treat congenital adrenal cortex hyperplasia then you need a maintenance treatment of prednisone. In oncological diseases, it has several use cases. It can be used to treat lymphatic leukemias, malignant lymphomas, Kallus disease. It can be used in neurological disorders, in acute exacerbation of multiple sclerosis. It can be used in ophthalmic disorders, like in optic neuritis. It can be used in kidney disorders, like in nephrotic syndrome. Skin disorders, like pemphigus vulgaris or erythroderma and there is a miscellaneous category that involves severe allergic reactions, immune suppressants and organ transplantations and for the prevention of nausea. This brings us to the mechanism of action. Prednisone is a systemic corticosteroid but is inactive and when you take the medication it goes through your stomach in your intestines there it's resorbed and then it's brought to the liver and your liver metabolizes it to prednisolone and this is the active form. And like all systemic corticosteroids, prednisone has two types of effect. A glucocorticoid effect on the one hand and a mineral corticoid effect on the other hand. The glucocorticoid effect mostly works at your immune system and your metabolism and it works much like your body's own cortisol. And the mineral corticoid effect works mostly in the balance of your fluids and your electrolytes and it works much like your body's own aldosterone. And in prednisolone, the glucocorticoid effects are high, but it has very little mineral corticoid effects. So that's important to note. Then, how does prednisone work? I already told you, you take it, it goes through your stomach in your intestines, it's resorbed, it's brought to your liver, and there it's metabolized to the active prednisolone. This comes intracellularly and will bind to corticosteroid receptors, where it forms a cascade of complexes which will lead to the production of messenger RNA and this will lead to the production of several proteins. And these proteins have three effects. Anti-inflammatory, metabolic effects and immune suppressant. The anti-inflammatory effects work as following. Prednisolone will lead to an upregulation of anti-inflammatory proteins. It will lead to a downregulation of pro-inflammatory proteins. It also will lead to a breakdown of certain proteins which will lead to an inhibition of granulation tissue forming. It will have a reaction on leukocytes by inhibiting lysosomal activity and therefore inhibiting inflammation. And lastly, it will lead to vasoconstriction and vascular sealing. And this will lead to increasing of the inflammatory exudate and the decrease of local edema. And this together forms the anti-inflammatory effect of prednisolone. Prednisone also has metabolic effects. In a fastened state, it will help to maintain normal glucose levels. And it does this by increasing gluconeogenesis in your liver, so the production of new glucose. It will also lead to the mobilization of amino acids. And lastly, it will lead to stimulation of fat breakdown and therefore the production of more new glucose. Prednisone also has an immune suppressive effect. 
mostly called the anti-allergic effect. And it does this by inhibition of leukocytes and monocytes. The migration properties of those cells are diminished, but also the phagocytic activity is decreased. There also is an inhibition of the lymphatic system and an inhibition of your humoral immunity by a decrease in formation of your antibodies. And then lastly, prednisone also has some minor mineral corticoid effects. So it leads to an increased exchange in your distal renal tubules of sodium for potassium and hydrogen. So this mechanism of action gives prednisone the following effects. Inhibition of inflammatory processes, regulation of your metabolism, as well as carbohydrates as fat and proteins, and lastly, regulation of your fluid and electrolyte balances. Then how do you use prednisone? You always take it with half a glass of water and take it with food if it gives you stomach complaints. Furthermore, always take it at fixed times so you have a certain level of medication in your blood. How long can you use it? This depends on the indication. So mostly a few days, still even years if you need to use it chronically. And then lastly, it's safe to use with any type of food. You can drive while using prednisone and you can combine it with little amounts of alcohol and it will not increase your side effects. To determine what dose of prednisone you need to give, it's important to know what the indication is. If you're giving a substitution therapy to someone who does not make their own cortisol, you give them low doses, two and a half milligram to five, one to two times a day. And you need to give it long term because they're not making their own cortisol. If you want to give it as shock treatment, as acute treatment and asthma exacerbations or CPD, then you need to give high dosage, 30 to 80 milligrams per day, divided over one to four doses even. You do this a few days, still a few weeks. If you want to give prednisone as maintenance treatment, for example, in patients with rheumatic arthritis or in severe COPD, then you give low dose to a high dose for several weeks to months or even years. However, if you're looking for a broad indication, the normal dose to start would be half a milligram to a milligram per kilogram body weight divided over two to four doses a day. So a normal dose can variate from five milligrams to 60 milligrams where you increase the dose every time you do not have the desired effect. However, if you have the desired effect, you start to gradually reduce the dose and you reduce the frequency, preferably to one time a day instead of more than once. So this brings us to the side effects. And your side effects are mostly depending on the type of therapy you're getting. For substitution therapy, side effects are most often low because you take little doses for a long time and your body can adapt to the prednisone you're getting and it also substitutes your own cortisol. So little chance on side effects there. For shock treatment, it's a bit different. From out of nowhere, you start a very high dose of prednisone and this may lead to high chances of side effects. And then lastly, for maintenance treatment, in the beginning, you start low to medium high dosages and this may increase your chance on having side effects. But also because you're probably doing it for a long time, for months to maybe even years, then your body adapts to the dose of prednisone you're getting and you're, it reduces the chance of side effects. However, because you're taking it this long, you get a little higher chance on the severe side effects. So this is important to note. Then what side effects precisely will you be getting? There can be side effects in fluids and electrolyte balances, like sodium and fluids retention, also heart failure or potassium loss. There can be uh, musculoskeletal system problems, like muscle weakness, muscle atrophy. There can be gastrointestinal system problems, peptic ulcers, pancreatitis, esophagitis. And lastly, there can be side effects of the skin, so erythema, delayed wound healing or stretch marks. There can be endocrinal effects, so menstruational disorders, erectile dysfunctions, hirsutisms. It can have an effect on your metabolism, so you can have weight gain, increase in appetite or in hypercholesterolemia. It can have an effect on your hematological status, so it can lead to granulocytosis or moderate leukocytosis. It can have neurological effects, like increased cranial pressure, convulsions, vertigo or a headache. It can have effects on your eye, subcapsular lens cataract, glaucoma or blurred vision. It can lead to psychic reactions like mood changes, euphoria, anxiety, irritability it can lead to effects on your blood vessels, hypertension, atherosclerosis, thromboembolism and lastly it can lead to increased infections, masking of symptoms, paired immune responses and hypersensitive reactions. 
Again, I didn't name all of them. Feel free to pause the video to check out all the descriptions on the slides. And if you think you might be experiencing any of these or maybe another side effect, always check your prescription and ask your doctor because maybe the dose of prednisone needs to be adapted or another medication might be better for you. So take that into consideration. When taking a look at interactions and the co-use of prednisolone, it's important to note that prednisolone suppresses your immune system and therefore it can have an effect on all kinds of different medications. So when combined with vaccination with live viruses, you might get sick of those viruses because your immune system is suppressed. Furthermore, when you combine it with vaccination with inactivated viruses or bacteria, because your immune system is suppressed, you will not have the proper response and you will not get immune. Furthermore, when combined with CYP3A inhibitors, this may lead to increased systemic side effects. When combined with estrogens, that may increase the effect of your corticosteroid and therefore maybe requires lowering your dose. Then, when combined with loop diuretics, TSI diuretics, this may lead to hypokalemia and can be very dangerous and lead to arrhythmia. So take that into consideration. When combined with cyclosporins, this may increase the effect of prednisolone as well as cyclosporin itself. So maybe you should lower both doses. When combined with anticoagulants, this may lead to ineffective anticoagulation. And therefore, you need to check the INR regularly to see if a person has adequate anticoagulation. When combined with NSIDs, this may increase the risk of ulcera. When combined with somatropine, this may lead to an decreased effect of somatropine. And when combined with ioniazid, it may also lead to a decreased effect of this medication. So when combining prednisone with enzyme inducers like carbamazepine, this may reduce the effect of corticosteroids. And therefore, you should always wait two weeks after stopping enzyme inducers before you can start a treatment with corticosteroids. Furthermore, when you want to combine prednisone with uh, salicylate, you need to know that they will have a decreased effect. Furthermore, when combining prednisolone with neuromuscular blocking agents, especially high dosages of corticosteroids, this may lead to an increased risk of myopathy. And lastly, when you want to do an allergic test and the person who took prednisolone, this may suppress the skin reaction of the test and doesn't make it that trustworthy. For taking prednisolone and pregnancy, it's important to note that especially chronic use at high dosage may lead to growth retardation and neonatal adrenal cortical suppression in the baby and therefore it can be harmful. It's advised that you can use it but do it as short as possible in the lowest possible doses because it can be harmful. Furthermore, when looking at prednisolone and fertility, chronic use at high dosage, so 30 mg a day, for more than 4 weeks may lead to a decreased fertility of a male by decreased spermatogenesis, which is reversible after stopping the use of prednisolone, but it persists for months after stopping. So take that into consideration. And for lactation, you need to know it's safe to use prednisolone, but wait three to four hours after breastfeeding because some prednisolone might come through the breast milk to your child. And therefore also, Monitor your child and growth and development extra, extra carefully with your pediatrician, just to make sure. For contraindications, prednisolone only has two contraindications. The first is gastrointestinal ulcera and the second is acute infections. And of course, you do not want to suppress your immune system by taking prednisolone if you have an acute infection. So that makes sense. This brings us to some warnings. So first of all, long-term treatment with prednisone may lead to suppression of your own HPA axis and therefore may lead to adrenal corticoid insufficiency. This can have symptoms of fever, myalgia, arthralgia and malaise. And therefore you need to always gradually reduce your corticosteroid treatment over the period of weeks to months so your own HPA axis start picking it up again. Furthermore, if in this period of prescribing prednisolone high stress is induced by surgery, trauma or infection, it might be wise to increase the dose of prednisolone for this period or even restart it if you recently stopped using prednisolone. Also, when taking prednisolone, because you suppress your immune system, you may have an increased risk on infections and therefore this can lead to masking of your clinical symptoms. And in diabetic patients, there may be more needs for insulin. And here are listed all the diseases where you need to give extra care to your patients when combining such a disease and the use of prednisolone. 
feel free to pause the video. I will not name all of them. I will just name some of them. So ulcerative colitis, ulcerative diseases, psychiatry disorders, latent tuberculosis, diverticulitis, diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, epilepsia, myasthenia gravis, glaucoma, and ocular herpes. There are some more, feel free to pause the video. And this brings me to my last slide, kinetic properties. Resorption of prednisone is good. Tmax will be within one to two hours. Your protein binding is almost 90%. Your metabolism is done by liver and is metabolized to prednisolone, which is the active form of prednisone. Elimination is done by urine as a metabolite and it takes your body roughly two to four hours to reduce half of the dosage in your blood. So this was my video on prednisone. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Furthermore, don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming videos and see you next time. Bye bye.